Welcome to the Weekly Bull, the broadcast that helps to inform you as a student and a New Yorker in only a few minutes. Now to our newsroom on campus at the King's College. On Thursday, March 26th, a gas explosion ripped through the East Village, reducing surrounding buildings to rubble and killing two people. After days of searching through the building remains, firefighters retrieved the missing bodies of 23-year-old Nicholas Figueroa and 27-year-old Moises Lacone. Lacone worked as a busboy at Sushi Park, one of the three businesses destroyed by the explosion. Figueroa was also at Sushi Park at the time of the blast, on a date. The New York Times reported Sunday that the incident responsible for injuring over 20 people and displacing over 60 households may have been caused by an illegally tapped gas line at 121 Second Avenue. The owner of Sushi Park, who spoke with the Times, suspects that the gas from the restaurant was being siphoned off into newly renovated apartments located above Sushi Park. The Lowdown, an online news source covering the Lower East Side, reported Sunday that several fundraising efforts are already underway to aid businesses impacted by the explosion. The mayor's office, to advance NYC, is accepting checks to help individuals who are injured and displaced. Donations labeled East Village Collapse can be sent to 253 Broadway, 6th Floor, New York, New York, 10007. The King's College men's rugby team began their season this past Saturday at the ERC Sevens Tournament at Stony Brook University. Despite the field being covered in snow, the team started out with an impressive draw against Columbia and then nearly repeated that performance with a close loss to the host Stony Brook. After two tough and hard-fought games, the team met a vicious Colgate side and got their teeth whitened by a score of 15 to nothing. The team looks to improve on their performance in two Saturdays when they participate in another ERC 7 tournament in Philadelphia. And now for the top five OATKC posts of the week. The next Statesmanship Institute will include the newly elected teams. It's the Joint Statesmanship, so we will be smoking joints. Whenever I see Roz, I'm like, damn girl, you've got a lot of grace and finesse. An easy MCA course? Isn't that redundant? Student one, why are you wearing jeans? Student 2, because I supported the China Venture and got a wristband. Student 1, King's is basically the Catholic Church of Business Casual. Pay for your indulgence, lose a week of purgatory. A girl with a church crush. Hey, I was looking at the book of numbers and recently realized it doesn't have yours. Living in the city, King's students and New Yorkers alike understand that nothing is more valuable than their time. Jacob Wilson, a sophomore at King's, decided to capitalize on this fact by creating his own company called Beat the Line. Beat the Line allows its customers to pay someone else to win in line for them at popular shows like SNL. Potential customers reach out to Wilson online or through referrals and tell him the show they'd like to see. Wilson then has one of his employees wait in line to get tickets. With minimal competition, his business is growing and flourishing. It's been so popular he's been able to raise prices from $10 to $15 an hour, and he's also started working on a website as well as new advertisements. However, the work does require intrepid employees willing to brave the weather for long periods of time. In fact, one employee waited in line 36 hours. Sounds like a James Franco movie. House executive teams are almost complete and all 10 presidents are in place. The Empire State Tribune would like to congratulate the newly elected presidents. Once all of the executive teams are elected, go to the EmpireStateTribune.com for a complete list of your new leadership. In further congratulations, Spencer Cashmanian is your new Mr. TKC. This week in announcements, on Tuesday, April 7th, the Pi Your Professor Showdown will take place. To help fundraise the international ventures trips to Turkey, you can put money in the bucket of the professor that you would like to see pied in the face. At Interregnum, whichever professor raises the most money in his bucket will be pied in the face, and the professor who comes in second gets to throw the pie. Also, the Interregnum Committee formally announced the keynote and Interregnum speaker, Dr. Carl Truman, and his lecture, Each Day Dies with Sleep, Literary and Theological Reflections on Mortality, which will take place on April 10th. Don't forget to follow the Empire State Tribune on Twitter or Facebook. Tweet at the EST with the hashtag Weekly Bowl with comments or questions. Signing off, I'm Michael Sheets. Thanks for bearing the bowl.